What's up everyone? Welcome back. I'm Tim. In today's guitar lesson, we're going to be learning Truth by Seether off of their awesome album Karma and Effect. Now remember that the guitars on this song in the original recording were tuned to drop D and then down another half step, but since I'm sure most of you are coming to this channel with just standard tuned guitars, we'll just do it in drop D, but remember that if you want to play it along to the album, you'll have to go drop D plus then an additional half step down for all of the strings. Also remember that all of my song tutorials come with full professional tab to every section of the song and they're featured right on screen so that you don't have to go anywhere. You can just follow along and learn at your own pace. Now, subscribe, drop me a comment about what you want to learn, and let's get rocking. The song opens up right into verse 1 with a clean guitar and it goes like this. So it's a nice easy riff to start the song. We start with a B power chord, which is the 2nd fret on the A string, the 4th fret on the D string, and the 4th fret on the G string. Okay, but it's a little trick here. We're actually going to lay our first finger across both the bottom strings at the 2nd fret. So bar uh, strings 6 and 5. Okay, and the reason we're going to do that is because this is a clean tone, we want everything to ring together nice, and this also makes it really easy to play the riff, because all that we have to do, as you'll see, is lift our first finger and put it back. That's all we're doing for this whole riff. Really easy. So, all then, once we're holding this, we just have to arpeggiate it. So, holding that, that chord form down, we play string A, the D string, the G string, back to the D string. And then we go down to the low string, back up to the A string, G string, D string. So the first measure sounds like this. Now, the super complicated part, lift your first finger and then just play those three bottom strings. Put your first finger back and play it again. Lift it off. And there's the first verse. And then we kick on the distortion and we get into the coolest riff of the song. Here we go. So this riff is a little more complicated than our opening riff, but it's a really fun one to play because it's not too bad. We're just sliding one finger along. But we want to get some dead strings to start with. We're going to go... So a down, up, up. And for every muted beat, it's gonna be that same pick stroke pattern, that down, up, up. Okay, so we start with the, just lay your fingers across the bottom strings. And this can be a little bit tougher than it originally appears because we got heavy distortion on this. You have to have your muting just right. You're gonna to wanna to lay more than one finger down. If you're only laying one finger, you're gonna get all sorts of harmonics and stuff. And it's not going to sound quite right. So make sure that you have at least two fingers down to really deaden those strings and make that cool chucka sound. Um, but just feel free, you know, put, put at least two down, but I just kind of flop all three or four fingers on those strings and really make it nice and chunky. So start with that down, up, up. And then we, you want to bar at the 10th fret and then slide down. So just hit a nice big power chord on the 10th fret. Slide down one step to the 9th fret. And then repeat that down, up, up from the ninth to the seventh. Repeat the down, up, up, seven to five. So we've got this. Okay, now we do the down, up, up. Okay, and we go to the second fret power chord. Two dead strums up to a D power chord. So the fifth fret on the A string, followed by the seventh fret on the D and the G, and then two more dead chakas. Okay? And then we can repeat that whole riff. So here's the whole riff really slow. Now we're repeating, okay? So the repeat is the exact same, except for the very last chord, instead of doing a D power chord on the fifth fret of the A string, we just do a power chord barring the bottom three strings at the fifth fret, okay? Um, so it's gonna sound like this the second half. And 
And then we get into our second verse, which is slightly different than the first verse. The second and the third verse both follow a different chord progression than what we did in that intro first verse. So I'll play you the second verse and here we go. So this second verse starts off pretty much the same as that first verse that we already learned. Uh, we start with this B power chord, but barring across the two bottom strings. And we just arpeggiate these two chords a little bit differently. So we start with the exact same arpeggio pattern for the first two beats, that B power chord. We go A string, D string, G string, back to the D string. Now, when we hit this, uh, it's actually an E sus two chord, when we hit this next chord, this is where our arpeggio pattern changes. We want to go the two low strings, followed by the D string, but then we want to lift our third finger to get that second fret to sound on the D string. And that arpeggio pattern, we're going to kind of do that same pattern through the next couple of chords. We slide up to our fifth fret, bar the two bottom strings at the fifth fret, and then we hit that seventh fret on the D string to our fifth fret. And then we just hit some open strings. Okay, we hit our low E open and it, well, would it be a low D, I guess, and drop D, our low D open, and then our A string open, and then our second fret on the D string to our open D string. Okay, so that all together, uh, once again, really slow is gonna sound like this. And then you play that four times and you've got your verse. Now there is a second guitar under that and it's an acoustic, but I'll just show you on this since I've got my clean tone dialed in and all that. So uh, it's actually a chordal part. So I'll strum the chords and then we'll quickly break it down for you. So if you're not familiar with bar chords, it's a nice little introduction to them. We start with a B minor bar chord. So you can basically take that B power chord that we've been doing for the rest of the song. Just add your second finger down there on the third fret of the B string. And you don't have to worry about barring across and getting that high string. If you wanna get that, you can. Okay, but you don't have to worry about that one. It sounds really nice without that highest note in there too. Okay, and so our strum pattern is one, two, uh, that's all we're doing, just three hits there. So there's a down, down, up. Just follow along with the picking pattern that I've got in the tab too, it'll help you get through this. And then we're immediately changing to our next chord. And these two fingers can stay put. Okay, you're just barring across those two bottom strings again. Okay, so once you hit this chord, three E and four and a. Here that first measure is nice and slow. And then we slide up just this shape that we have, we slide it up to the fifth fret. So we're fretting our fifth and our seventh frets. Okay, and we get that nice sliding sound. So, and we just do three hits on that again, just down, down, up. And we immediately go to our open D uh, strings and that buys us a little bit of time to hop down to this nice big huge open D power chord. Okay. So that last measure is one, two, a uh, three E and four E and uh, nice and slow. Okay, the whole thing nice and slow.
and you play that four times to coincide with the other riff that I just showed you. And then the uh, cool distorted riff kicks back in and then we get into the chorus, which is again a new riff. So here we go. So this chorus riff is really similar to what the acoustic guitar was strumming in that second and third verses. So if you're paying attention there, this is going to be a breeze. Once again, we start with our uh, B power chord that we know so well. And we do that same strum pattern that we had with the uh, acoustic strumming as well, the down, down, up. Okay, get a couple of dead strums in there. And that buys us time to get to our next chord here, uh, which is a big E power chord. We're barring the bottom three strings at the second fret, and you can keep your pinky down on that fourth fret of the G string. Okay, so that fourth finger doesn't have to move. You're just going from this. Okay, so nice and easy. Now we hit that twice, that chord. And a couple more dead chucks as we move up to the fifth fret. Okay, and then we get another two and a half beats with this chord. One, two, a three E, and hit, hit that big open D power chord on the end of three. And then just hit your second fret power chord, barring those three bottom strings, back to the open one. That whole riff nice and slow. And now we get into the solo section. Before we hit the solo, let's just quickly go over what the rhythm guitar is doing. It's super easy. So the rhythm underneath that solo is just doing two chords, a big E power chord and a G power chord at the fifth fret, uh, back and forth for eight measures, and that's what's going on in the solo. But the rhythm is one, the end of two, and four. So there's a bit of a syncopation there. One, two, and three, four. And then move up. One, two, and three, four. Okay, and the only thing you have to do is just get a little couple of chuckas in there again as you transition those chords. Okay. And you can put them in again there too as you transition back. Uh, and there you go. There's the rhythm guitar. Let's do the solo. Okay, to make this solo sound right, just dial in some good distortion and put some chorus on there and it'll sound like the album. So we start off by bending the 14th fret on the G string up a whole step and releasing it. Back to the, down to the 12th fret and then down to the 11th fret. Slide that first finger back. Now hammer onto the 12, back to the 11th fret. Hammer back to 12 and then do a little shift and get 12 and 14 on the D string. Okay, so we've got this. And then we're going to do a quick little hammer from 12 to 14 on the D string. Up to 12 and 14 on the G string. And then we repeat that little phrase where we bend, release. Down to 12, down to 11, back to 12. And then we hit the 11th fret on the G string and slide up to 12. And then do a string skip, hit 14 on the high string. And then do a little grace note hammer. So we'll pick the 14th again, but quickly hammer onto the 15th with your pinky. Back to the 14th. Back to the 15th. Okay, so that second phrase is this. Now 
Now we start the uh, third phrase with a little pick up into it by hammering from 12 to 14 on the D string again to the 12th on the G string. And we repeat this little bend release to 12, down to the 11th again, hammer to 12, 11, hammer to 12, 12, 14 on the D string. So that third phrase is exactly the same as the first. And our pickup into the last phrase is again, our little uh, hammer on the D string from 12 to 14, 12 to 14 on the G string. And here we go with our bends again, bend release, down to 12 and 11, hammer to 12, do our little slide from 11 to 12, up to 14, hammer to 15, and then end it on the 14th fret. And just give it some vibrato and let it fade out. And there's your solo. So that's pretty much it for the song, guys. But I did just want to touch on the outro of the song. After our solo, we go into a double chorus and then the final riff, which is again. Right, it ends on that riff. But the double chorus also has a couple more guitars in there layered up that if you were playing this live and you wanted to kind of fatten this up or create more excitement so that it sounds like you're reaching the end of the tune, then you could get one guitar doing this part. So, It's just a one measure thing that repeats for the whole eight measures of the chorus. So what we're doing is actually hitting uh, unison Bs. Hit the open B, the second string is open, and then we're fretting the fourth fret on the G string. So it's just unison Bs, and we're going one and two and. Release that to the second fret, the A on the second fret. So it's just one and two and three and four and one measure of eighth notes repeated eight times. And then they get even crazier on the second chorus because there's that double chorus. The second chorus, they keep that guitar going. And then they put in another one an octave higher. Same rhythmic figure, just hitting that B and A an octave higher. So you can go up to the seventh fret of the high string and the fifth fret uh, of the high string. Keep that open B ringing as you ring those ones as well. Ring the two notes together with that. And then that'll fatten up those outro choruses. And then the only other thing is how they end it. Uh, they end it with that riff. Okay, so it's the exact same except for the very final eighth measure. We just want to do this. Slide from seven to five, hit four chuckas, and then just second fret power chord, hold it, let it fade out, and there you go. So there's how to play Truth on Guitar by Seether. Hope you really dug this lesson. It's a great introduction to drop D tuning. Be sure to check out a few more videos before you leave. You know, click on one of these that are on my end screen. And don't forget to subscribe. Drop me a comment telling me what you want to learn. And I'll see you next time.